The Chosen TV series is one of the most successful shows in the world. We have Dallas Jenkins, the creator, with us to answer a few questions. Dallas, I want to jump right in. You and I both have famous evangelical dads who've written millions of books. And before we get to, not written millions of books, <laughs> sold yeah. millions of books, important qualifier. Yeah. I'm really curious, before we get to The Chosen, why are you a Christian? What's your story? Oh, that's a, that's a great question. Um, my, uh, I mean, I was raised in an evangelical home. My dad is Jerry Jenkins, the author of the left behind books, which is what, uh, he's been writing since, you know, before I was alive. And so I was mm -hmm. raised born into a family that, uh, that took God seriously and Jesus seriously. And, and I was a church goer. So, um, yeah, I, I, I think that's why I got started. Now, as to why I'm mm. still a believer, 47 uh, years into my life, uh, I, it's it's that my experience with God, my experience uh, as as a believer, has uh, this may sound like sound weird, but it's it's lived up to the promise mm. that mm. a that a childlike conversion experience, as it were, you know, accepting Jesus as your heart into your heart. Uh, and and d committing your life to him uh, has not made necessarily life easy, but it's made life joyous. Sure. And so mm -hmm. when, you know, as your dad has written, I mean, your dad has got, has written extraordinary books, but um, when, when, when the, the promises of faith come alive, um, even here on earth, even before you get to the ultimate promises of faith, which is eternity, um, you go, yeah, I've just seen too much. I've seen too much to that to, mm. to where I can't not believe. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I, I think my all, all 40, you know, since probably I was five years old when I first prayed the prayer, uh, I, I, I believe God has been, uh, been proven faithful. That, that's totally fair. So in your TV show, you guys are creating this imaginative, creative look at the life of Jesus through the eyes of many of his followers. I imagine with as big as this is, People have asked questions like, how do we know the Bible is actually true? How do we know Jesus rose from the grave? Does your ministry deal in any way with those apologetic questions? Or you just punt and say, that's not our lane. Read these books. Check out these folks. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a really important distinction. And I want to I want to clarify, too, and I hope this comes out the right way. We're not a ministry. And I think the reason that I want to mm. say that is because, mm. to your question, you're right. Some of these questions are for people like your dad to have explored. Um, mm. we, we we're making a show under a couple of, of assumptions. Number one, we're portraying the stories that the Bible uh, tells. We're adding to some of those stories, obviously, cultural context, historical context, some artistic imagination, of course. And our operating principle is we believe that our portrayal is plausible. As to whether or not the truth of what we're portraying has changed your life as the viewer or not. If you are someone who's a believer, if you're not a believer, that is actually not for me to try to impact. I'm not, when you come to watch my show, I'm not saying, now before you watch my show, you need to have come to a faith in Jesus. I mean, look, that's true of our cast and crew. I mean, the majority of our cast and crew aren't tr traditional evangelical mm. believers. Um, so we don't have a religious t litmus test for, for who is going to be involved in our show or who is actually going to watch our show. Now, to be clear, my hope is that after watching our show, you know and love Jesus more. My hope is that you consider that these stories might have actually been real. But even if you don't when you're watching it, that doesn't mean you can't still appreciate the show or glean something from it. But ultimately, the end game of the show is hopefully to hand the baton off to people like yourself. Hmm. I am not a pastor. Um, I do believe that the show can be pastoral. And I have heard from pastors and thought leaders and authors who have said the show has been a great tool in their toolbox in order to disciple people. Hmm. But the show in and of itself, I don't want to put uh, on the show or on me uh, the, 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 the job that I believe only God can do that the whole, only the Holy Spirit can do. If that makes sense. I'm yeah. I, again, I'm not resisting yeah. the call to evangelism. In fact, that's yep. a call we all have, but the show itself, uh, I think um, if, if we're trying to, in a 50 minute episode, not only portray a show and make it something that people actually want to watch, but also trying to 
to give the 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 you know the the four steps of salvation and the you know the yeah make yeah. a gospel tract. I think I, I don't <laughs> think the show is going to be nearly as effective at that as someone like you can be in a personal relationship with a with a, a listener or a congregant or a friend. That's totally fair. So the reality is a lot of people will watch this and filter the Bible through the show rather than the show through the Bible. That's just the reality and communicate in any fashion. Now you said you're a TV show creator, not a pastor. One of the passages that always gives me pause in the scriptures is James three, when it says like, woe to anybody who wants to be a teacher. Now you're not a teacher in that sense, but you're portraying the life of Jesus in a fashion. Many people interpret through that lens. Mm -hmm. What safeguards do you put in place to just make sure you're dealing with the weight of telling a TV show about Jesus that many biblically illiterate people might take as gospel, so to speak? Oh, yeah, that's such a great and a very important question. So uh, here's the bad news. I can't control our entire audience. There will be people, it's just true, there will be people who watch the show uh, perhaps in the wrong way. I think Christians and non-Christians. Uh, there mm -hmm. are some people who will, uh, in a positive way, idolize the show uh, and and see it as something more than it is. I think it's entirely possible also that the opposite is true, that they might um, reject the show and miss mm -hmm. out on some of the the truths and the, in, uh, I don't want to say enlightenment because that sounds a little too new agey, but miss out on the uh, what, what's happened to a lot of our viewers, which is that reading the stories on the page has has been in fact impactful but seeing it played out has caused them to go oh wow these weren't just people in stained glass windows or in black and white words on a page they were human mm. beings now i see those bible stories with even more clarity and they are going back to their bibles more than ever but to your question what do we do to do our best to try to ensure that the fewest number of people <laughs> misuse the show. Well, the first thing you see when you when you start watching the show, the very first thing before episode one comes up on the screen, it explicitly says, we are not the Bible. Hmm. Bible is the Bible. Viewers are encouraged to read the Gospels. We have combined certain locations and timelines. We have added cultural context, biblical context, artistic imagination. Uh, and again, viewers are encouraged to read the Gospels. Hmm. Um, so we say that right off the bat. We say it all the time on social media. We say it in live streams. I say it to fans. I say it in interviews. We're not the Bible. The Bible is the Bible. The Bible does not need to be improved. We're not an improvement on the Bible. We're not adding to the Bible. We're not adding to scripture because we're not scripture. Your Bible has not changed since the show came out. So here's the good news. The really, really good news is that we have heard from literally, I'm not exaggerating when I say this, between social media, emails, in-person conversations, we've heard from literally millions of people who have said, wow. I'm reading the Bible more than ever because of the show. I am more engaged in church than ever because of the show. I am praying more than ever because of the show. They're not saying, I'm praying to the show. They're not saying that. If they were, that would be a major concern. And I know some of our critics are fearful of that happening, and I'm sure it's mm. happened in some rare occasions, but that's extremely rare. So I do believe that our viewers have a much more healthy understanding of the difference between the show and the Bible than I think some uh, uh, commentators fear. So at the time we're recording this, you've completed three seasons and you said millions of feedback. Are there any scenes looking back based on feedback or criticism that people have given that you thought, you know what, I would have filmed this differently in light of the feedback people have given if so, what, what's an example of that kind of scene? Here's why the answer to that is a qualified no. Because mm. by the time you see it, I have wrestled with all of that. I'm not mm. making this based on what people will respond to. Mm. My, my number one obligation is to God. My second is to my wife. <laughs> uh, <laughs> your dad has preached about that quite a bit. You probably have too. Yes, he has. Yeah. Um, so, uh, when I'm writing, my co-writers are writing, when we're filming it, I'm not thinking of how can I reduce the amount of criticism or increase the amount of praise. Mm. 
God took all of that desire away from me five years ago. I had a huge career failure and out of that was birth the chosen. But my narcissism, my desire for affirmation, as the Bible calls it, the fear of man, um, that has, you know, with God's help, uh, mostly gone away. Uh, mm. And I think God helped me if I ever start to base my opinion on what we should be doing in this show on how people might respond. So by the mm. time the show comes out, when a critic says, hey, I don't like that, I go, you should change it. I go, look, we've already had these d discussions. I've talked to my biblical scholars. I've talked to my pastor. I've talked, I've prayed. I've done the research. I have, got, by, the by the time the show has come out, we have wrestled with all of these things and are aware of what the criticism might be. So if there's ever a situation where someone criticizes it and I go, oh, wow, good point. I never thought of that. I, I wish I would have done that differently. That'd be really dangerous. That'd be scary. Mm -hmm. I think you would be scared. Uh, uh, and even in your position as a show that you watch with your family, you're like, man, I thought I was hoping that Dallas was doing a lot more front end work uh, to taking this more seriously than a, a YouTube comment, you know, could, could influence what he's thinking and, and, and make him regret something. Uh, we, we've, we've wrestled with all that. Now, again, to be very clear, and I know we got to go here soon, but I, I, I'm not, that doesn't mean that I'm not open to uh, sure. a, be a better idea. I'm just saying most of that, if not all of it happens on the front end, mm -hmm. our scripts are reviewed, our, we're ask, asking these challenging questions so that we're not stuck in a show that's being watched by over a hundred million people around the world going, Oh gosh, <laughs> I wish I wouldn't have said that that ended up influencing people wrongly. And you have the same thing in your, in your, in your line of work and, and ministry um, you're, 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 you take this very seriously be so that you don't, you don't say something that ends up influencing people wrongly. And, and, uh, I mean, you're a, you're, you're a flawed, sinful human like I am, but, uh, you don't get up to preach or get on your podcast winging it. And, and then, uh, you know, hoping that God, you know, f figures it out for you in the end, you're, you're really taking mm -hmm. this seriously on the front end. One of the folks that I know helps you out is my colleague at Talbot, Doug Huffman, just kind of being theological review amongst many. So Dallas, I got a ton more questions from you. If we ever had time to really unpack this and probe in the depths, I would jump at it. But uh, thanks for a few minutes today and uh, keep up the good work. And let's uh, let's let's do that. Let's do that sometime. I'd love to love to talk more and dive in deep and answer as many questions as you can. Uh, but yeah, uh, you mentioned Dr. Huffman, who was my Bible professor a uh, great man. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we're, we, 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 we definitely take the biblical fidelity very seriously. And I appreciate the opportunity to talk to you about it.